there's a, there's a phrase in the Society of St. Vincent Paul that we use, no form of charity was foreign to the society. And they, and they, they took care of the physical and spiritual needs of the whole person, like you do here. You know, I saw Dr. Anderson this morning, you know, here at the clinic. I mean, take care of the whole person. And that's the way they were really concerned about from the very beginning of the society in 1833. Well, the society, at that time, the Conference of, of Charity of St. Vincent Paul, it soon changed names. Changed names from the Conference of Charity of St. Vincent Paul to the Society of St. Vincent Paul. It started with seven members the six collegians and their president, the very man. Within a year and a half, it increased to 100 members in the one conference. They decided to divide up, and at first, they didn't want to divide up. They thought, they all liked each other, you know, they're all friends. But they said, we don't want to divide them. We want to stay together. And they said, can you imagine trying to, to deal with 100 people at one time in a meeting? And their college kids at that. You know? So finally, after all kinds of prayer and discussion, they said, OK, we'll divide up into two groups of 50. But we want to meet at the same place. <laughs> you know? And then, in God's providence, they decided, no, we better go in, in two different places. So they divided up, and then they divided up again. Society went from seven to a hundred, and it kept going and going. And these, these conferences started to be identified in, with parishes. So in Paris, first one was going to a church called St. Stephen on the Mount. That was the first conference. The second conference went to St. Sulpice. Now believe it or not, this is 2010. These conferences are still going. You can go right now to Paris in and those conferences are still working in those parishes. Believe it or not. Okay. The first conference outside of Paris started at a place called Nîmes, which is down by the Mediterranean Sea. I've been there. Big conference of people. Uh, first conference outside of Paris started in Rome, Italy, when one of the students went there because he was a famous painter to study painting and he started a conference down there. Uh, this is, this is uh, I was talking to, to Steve Trubisky the other day. You know, how did this, how did they start all these conferences? How does, how does St. Vincent Paul start? I mean, how did this spread? Well, it spread like this. Say, say this group here, we were all at a conference together, right? And you, you, you graduated from the Sorbonne. You had to go home, right? School was out. So you go home and you, and you get a couple of your buddies and say, hey, let's start this conference so we can help the poor. And they go, oh, okay. So they, they would start a conference. And then the same thing happened all these other different towns and cities. And it just starts spreading all over. Because a lot of these students, they weren't just at the Sorbonne for law and medical students, they weren't there just, they weren't just Frenchmen, they were from all over the world, which they still are today in Paris. So they decided after they started growing and growing, hey, we need some kind of a rule. We need something to keep us all on the same page. We all have the same purpose. We all have the same spirituality. We all have the same spirit. We got to put this down in, in writing. So on December uh, 
1835, they put out the first rule. And, and Mr. Bailly wrote the first part, the introduction, and this guy, Francois Lavier, that I mentioned at the beginning sometime, he wrote the second part. You know, because they wanted to keep their, their primary spirit alive. Frederick Ozana graduated from law school in 1836. He went back to Lyon. Well, what did he do when he got into Lyon? He started the society in the city of Lyon, which is still alive and vibrant today. This is in August. He started it and he became the president of the consul in Lyon. And they got bigger and they divided up in the city. It's how it did. They just got more and more members and they divided up. By 1850, Frederick Ozanam was 37 years old. He saw the Society of St. Vincent de Paul established in Canada, the United States, Mexico, Ireland, Scotland, England, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Holland, Austria, Germany, Switzerland, Greece, Turkey, Algeria, Jerusalem. And Frederick said, God did it. It wasn't me, it wasn't us. God did it. It's a providential fact. In, uh, in 1850 also, at the same time in France, they had 285 conferences going on, just in, in France. So, from seven people, one country, one city, today we have about 900,000 members in 142 countries in the world. And we're still growing. We're still growing, the society. I've seen it in, in the 50 years that I, I've been involved with, when I first became a priest and first when you saw the, the conference of St. Vincent Paul in this little town in, in Pampa, Texas. I've seen it, how it's grown in my lifetime. So now in Africa, we have 40 countries that have the Society of St. Vincent Paul. In, in the United States, North America and all the islands, we have 33 countries. In Asia, we have 27 countries. We have a, we have a conference of St. Vincent de Paul on the island of the Bahrain, which is 90 some, 99% Muslim. Believe it or not. You know, it's just all over. In Europe, we have 30 countries. Oceania, we have 10 countries. So we're worldwide. So you people, you employees, you, you're working for a worldwide organization. Yeah, it's not profit. You know, there's a lot of volunteers, primary volunteer people. But you're working for a worldwide organization that started in 1833 and it's still going. You know, I don't know if you realize that. You're not working just for this conference called Phoenix of the St. Vincent Paul. You know, you're not working just for Society of St. Vincent Paul in the United States of America. You're working for worldwide. You know, it, it's a, I, I think it's, you know, it's incredible. It started, like I said, it started with seven college kids. Seven college kids. And, and, it, and it, you know, it's a society that brings in people of all faiths or no faith. There's no distinction of race, color, creed. There's only one requirement. Human needs. A person needs something. They're poor, they're down and out. And they come to us. 
So I want to thank 